Hi, and welcome to the Selected Tech Podcast, brought to you by a group of four MVPs doing webinars, sessions, and interviews on all things SharePoint, Office 365, and the Microsoft AI ecosystem. Their motto is, learn, share, reuse. And here they are, Albert Yam, Rick, Stefan, and Tommy. Hi, hi, good evening. Tonight, I'm actually having the opportunity to talk about something that I, I figured out, I think a week ago or something. Um, one of the things that you might figure out that I'm doing is a lot of low code stuff. And within a lot of the low code stuff we're doing, we're sending out emails, we're using nine out of 10 times in flows or logic apps. We use the, um, the Azure Active Directory to do an application registration and then use that app rec to actually send out email, which is really awesome. Um, obviously, you can, can do that in your own applications as well. It's not only low-code related, but we see this scenario a lot at, at low-code uh, samples. And if you read about it, then it's either using your user token or you use something like a shared mailbox to send the email from. And then nine out of 10 times, the samples that I see out there are actually using the mail read or mail read all or mail write all. And then potentially you are having an app, uh, an app configuration that allows you to read any mailbox in your tenant. And when we are deploying solutions like that, we get a lot of uh, questions. Okay, can we scope down? Can we make sure that that registration can only access a single mailbox or only some mailboxes? So I started digging in and I figured out that there is actually a way to do that. It's kind of exchange management stuff, but the cool thing is that you just can actually scope down your application registration. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk you through what you need to do to make sure that if you're using an Azure Active Directory application registration that by proxy has permissions to all mailboxes in your environment, that you can actually scope that down or configure that slightly different to make sure that it cannot access all mailboxes, but only mailboxes either you decide on or whether it's a specific one or a, or a set of mailboxes that you want to add out access to. So um, basically, we're going to walk you through the different steps. Um, there are going to be a blog post about it as well. But um, let's see if we can get uh, get it to work and, and scoping down our permission scope. Now, the ultimate goal is that there is going to be a second recording where we do the same for access to specific SharePoint sites. So I'm going to challenge the other guys to figure out how to do that because I haven't uh, so far, but I know it is possible. Now, for, for, for the record, you mean you're challenging Rick, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that sounds good. Let's put a name to it. Let's challenge Rick for that one. So okay. um, in order to, to do anything, we'll need an application registration. So bear with me. It's an empty environment. Haven't done anything. Well, it's not an empty environment. But for the sake of demo, let's assume it's an empty environment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use CLI for M365 to actually create a application registration. And I already written out the command. What I'm going to do is M365 AD app add. Give it a name. Doesn't really matter what name it's going to be. I'm going to say, OK, it is an API application, and we're going to use the graph mail read. But this could also be mail send or something like that. Now, if I'm going to execute this, what it will do is it will register that application for me. So it will do everything. I'm already signed in with the CLI. So it's not going to ask me to sign in. But what it's uh, going to return me is the actual application ID. It's going to return me a tenant ID, and it's going to return me the secret. Now, I actually have to delete this after this demo because you can see the app ID and the client secret. Now, with this app ID and client secret, I can thus read all mails in my tenant, meaning that if I'm going to do a logic app, that logic app can then just talk to any mailbox in my environment. So let's quickly do that for the sake of uh, demo. Before we do that, let's have a quick look because there's one thing you actually need to do if you create a new application. I already did the demo, so let's see. It's OB. So here we've got the mail test OB. There we go. Now, if I go here and I'm going to go to my API permissions, you will see that I do have the mail read, but it's not granted yet. So I'm going to do grant admin consent just to make sure that one, two, three, it will tell me where uh, we're granted. Now, obviously, this is a demo, so it took a few more seconds. But as you can see, I now have that mail read permissions. 
I already opened a new tab with a blank logic app. What I can do is in my logic app, I can do an HTTP call and I can say, okay, I'm going to do a HTTP get and that's going to be HTTP as graph dot graph.microsoft.com v1 users and then i think it's called my email address uh and i think it's called messages not 100 percent sure so it might fail but we'll see um i'm gonna add authentication and within the authentication you can do different things but i'm gonna go for oauth then i have my tenant which is this id so i'm gonna copy paste that in here then the audience is https graph.microsoft.com then the client id is going to be my app id always a bit confusing between app id and client id luckily they actually have this demo here where they say okay application and then explain that it is the client id so you know what you're looking for and then i'm going to paste in the secret so i'm going to copy paste this one and then I'm going to do save and I'm going to run this one. Now, if I run this, then if all's good, I actually get returned all uh, mails or at least the, the top X mails in this mailbox. Um, there we go. So it says, okay, we're all good. I get some emails. I can see the body. I can see center. So I get some, uh, I get some data back, probably spam that, uh, that I got there. So all good. Logic app is working. Everything is fine. Now, as you can imagine, because we have that client ID and client secret, we can access any mail. So any user that I know the mail address from in my tenant, I can do, okay, give me messages. Now let's assume I have either a shared mailbox or I have some configuration where I say, okay, I do not want to grant permissions to everyone. I want to grant permissions to a specific mailbox. So that this logic app can only read anything from my other demo account. So I have a demo, called, a demo account called Nancy. I want to make sure that this app registration can only access that specific mailbox. In order to do that, you'll actually need the Exchange PowerShell. So what we're going to do is the first step, we're going to connect to Exchange Online. And in order to do that, you'll do the, well, basically you do connect Exchange Online. So let's, uh, let's start there. Con Typing. Yeah, there we go. So I can do connect exchange online. It recognizes me. I'm going to add the user principal name, which is my admin account. Let me get logged in. And then it says, okay, I get a pop up on my other window where it's going to make sure, okay, authentication. There we go. So I'm now signed in into my, uh, my PowerShell window. Um, almost signed in it's pulling in some remote stuff so there we go i'm i'm signed in now you see that there are some old commandlets there are some warnings explaining what i can do but in order to work with those set, sets of permissions what you can do is you can create a so-called uh called application access policy i have to uh well use the correct phrasing now with an application access policy what you can do is you can register a scope or register a set of permissions and let me uh, get me so there we go new application access policy what you can actually do is you can specify the access rights you can specify the app id and you can specify the policy scope group id which if you go read or, or walk through the different steps, the first parameter is the access rights where you can either restrict access, access or deny access. So restrict access will say only this application or the application can only access this specific mailbox or the defined set of mailboxes that you want to do. Or if you use the deny access, you can say, okay, I want to explicitly deny access to a bunch of mailboxes. So either your application can access a single mailbox or you can say, I've got this group of users, let's say the administrators or maybe the board of directors. And I want to make sure that either though the app can access all mailboxes, the board of directors are excluded by using the deny access. Then the next one is you'll need to specify an app ID, which makes sense because we're gonna use an app ID to get that data. So we want to make sure that the access policy that we're creating actually is for a specific application ID. And if I scroll down a little bit more, then there is a policy scope group ID. And within the policy scope group ID, you can specify 
either discovery mailboxes, dynamic distribution groups, distribution groups, or shared mailboxes. So you can configure either a mailbox or a group, whichever suits your needs. Now, in my demo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, copy paste some code, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new policy where I'm going to say I'm only allowed to connect to a specific mailbox. So let's do this. Now my app ID is actually this GUID. Let me put it in there. Then my mailbox is going to be, um, well, let's use this one. It's a demo account that I am for sure having. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, new application policy, specify the app ID, specify my mailbox, remove the space there. And I'm going to say, I'm going to restrict access. So if I would run this in PowerShell, what actually happens, let me clear this. Now I'm going to press enter. Ooh, I have to make sure that there is a quote at the end of what I'm copy pasting, otherwise it won't run. This looks better. Now, as you can see, it's making sure that I have a remote PowerShell session, it's authenticating, and then it's going to take like one or two seconds to execute a command. And then it will tell me whether it has been created. So now this has a, um, a well, policy on that mailbox. So that means that I can now with this application registration that I have, the app ID that is specified, I can only access this specific mailbox. So what happens is that it can take a while in order to uh, to actually work. So I've uh, so far I encountered if I create a new policy, it's it's almost instantaneously. It takes like one or two minutes to to uh, get working. If I change an existing policy, it can take to uh, up to an hour in order to actually get working. So let's hope that since it's a new one, it's now actually working right away. Because if I run this, I created that app policy on a different mailbox than this mailbox. So what happens is if I start run, it will execute. But if all is well, it's going to tell me, yeah, you're not allowed to do this. I will get an error. As you can see, I get an error. So what happens now is that it says, oh, it's forbidden. You're not allowed. And you actually get an error. Access denied. Access to the O data is disabled. So even though my application registration still exists, it's still valid. I didn't change anything around client ID and client secrets, but I can no longer access this specific mailbox. Now, what I can do is I can say, oh, I'm going to change this. And instead of this mailbox, I'm going to use another one. If it let me select everything. So there we go. I'm going to put in the mailbox that I put a policy on. Then I'm going to save and I'm going to run again. What you will see happening is that it now will work again because, well, obviously I created a policy on this specific mailbox and I'm allowed to access this mailbox. So what you can do with this is you can go through any application registration that you like, any app rep that you already have, and you can start assigning policies. So if you have an app application register registration policy or you already have apps running in your environment, you can just say, oh, maybe even though it has application, mail read, mail write, um, anything on a mailbox that you can actually, um, well, apply these policies to. So if you're having, let's say, logic apps or you have Azure Runbooks running where you send out emails for your runbook, you in order to send a mail from a runbook, you do need you do need that mail read permission or mail write permission, and sorry, mail send permission. If you by default don't change anything, then potentially you can send mail on behalf of anyone, and that could be well. I know for sure that CISOs don't really like that. So a lot of the apps that we created so far, we've been going through this process and started discussing, okay, do we need permission on all mailboxes? And there might be a valid case, but there is also a lot of scenarios where you maybe want to have access to a set of, I don't know, service accounts or shared mailboxes. And with this, you can actually show and prove that you do not have access to anything else. And there is no nothing you need to do in code, assuming that you already implemented how to handle access denied requests. Uh, if you don't have an access denied request 
uh, implemented in your code, then yeah, then it might fail. But assuming that you follow best practices and you handle uh, failures in your code properly, then there's nothing you need to do. Just create a policy. And like you see here, it's a single line uh, in order to get it executed to apply that policy to an application registration. So I would say it's really best practice to, to implement this in your environment. So really short demo, it's all pretty straightforward. Um, biggest challenge for me is was that I never heard of this policy. So uh, when I got the, got the question, hey, can we scope this down? I was like, well, I can Google for it. And I found this uh, interesting MSDN page where they explained, oh, there is this command. I was like, okay, but discovery mailboxes, what, what's that? Can I use a normal user mailbox? And apparently you can. Um, and I played around a little bit with it. So as you can imagine, if you have distribution groups or dynamic distribution groups, it makes it easier. So you could have a dynamic group where you say, I want to have all uh, board of directors or all senior level uh, employees into a dynamic distribution group, then you can configure that as well. Uh, but yeah. Generally speaking, it's just making sure that you have access to the correct mailbox, and and there you go. Yeah, we use it a lot. Cool. If you have uh, big companies with different entities, different com countries that actually don't have anything to do with each other, or yeah, they do. They want to make sure that they don't have anything to do with each other. Then it's uh, pretty. Yeah, that that does definitely good. make sense. In the, in that case, you can even go. Okay, I have an app app registration that can access part of the company but not everyone else making sure mm. that that's in place but there is a limit to it i thought no it's it's high but there is a limit to it you can only apply it like i don't know ten thousand times or something which oh good one i let thought me... there was a limit isn't there a limit of something oh, let's uh let's use google for that limits uh, uh limiting limit. application yeah, so it's calendars, contacts, mails, and mailbox settings, which makes sense. I thought there was some limit or might be uh, managing it, of course, because you create a new app registration, you manage that app registration, and in two years the app is gone, but you have no idea that yeah. the policy is yeah. still there. And uh, that's. that's well, I can't really thing. find anything about that. It does make sense if there is a limit on the amount yeah. of policies, policies that you can create. Good, good question. I will come yeah. back to that one. I think there's something like that. Yeah, there might be. So for demo purposes, I just created like one or two mm. just to walk through it. Most customers that we work with have like 10, 15 app registrations in their tenants. So they're not that huge, I would say. You should take a look at my demo tenant. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think like a year ago, I started cleaning up. And ever since, whenever I do a demo, I try to clean it up the day afterwards. Otherwise, I end up like with 5,000 applications that I have no clue what, what they were for. Test mean, week one, like, test week two. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, T Teams Toolkit one. Yeah, and I think yeah. now I'm at Teams Toolkit, I don't know, 272 or something like that. <laughs> As you can see here, I've got a pretty clean set yeah, of nice. applications not yeah. too bad not too bad yeah, that's nice let me see you should clean up my tenant as well up here. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i have oh, to clean up load more six one. times <laughs> i've got a cli script it deletes everything for you uh, right, let me see. yeah so that was it cool very cool very cool so next um, next time we'll do sharepoint permissions sharepoint permissions but it it's it's tricky. Hmm. SharePoint permissions is tricky. Yeah, but it's, it, it is needed that you can scope those permissions because yeah, you cannot it's... just trade an application uh, or an Azure AD application. It's like, okay, I need like 777 seven, seven to everything and yeah, uh, mm -hmm. let's go. That's not flying anywhere, no, hopefully. I no, wonder no, if there's the same thing for Teams as well. So yeah. you can uh, be selected from Teams. Nope, I don't think so. There, there is. But teams, it, yeah, is yes. there? Yeah. yeah, with Teams, it's even nastier. With the uh, if you need like chats or whatever application yeah. permissions, for chat, you need to ask Microsoft through a yeah. MS Forms application, which ends up nowhere apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, that that's for next. That's your challenge, Rick, not mine. 
Yeah, the silence of the air, I know it works. I've been messing about with that a few times. So there was this little monkey on my shoulder and it just jumped to yours. Yeah, okay. yeah and, uh, and during the jump, uh, it, it turned from SharePoint to SharePoint and Teams. Yeah, yeah, nice teams. one, nice one. <laughs> that went well. Oh, well. Uh, well, thanks for joining. I had fun. Uh, short one this time, but uh, I hope it wasn't less valuable so for that matter. No, interesting. Yeah. Pretty cool. Perfect. So see you around. Bye. Yeah. Thank you.